approaching hole number 99. Seven green, head to AT. We got two left, I'm hurting. Sunburned, but I'm battling my schwanz off right now. We're gonna finish strong. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back into the No Laying Up Film Room, presented by our friends at Callaway Golf. Neil, I'm so freaking excited for today. This has been months and months of planning in the works, uh, but we're finally going to talk about it. This is uh, the 100-hole hike at Sweeten's Cove. Well, a, a few months back, uh, I, you know, Randy and I discussed on Strap sending the elevator back down. Uh, so first and foremost, we're starting with the kids. You know, the, the graduating from the kid getting married this year. So it's a 100-hole hike organized by a charity that we work with, nonprofit Youth On Course. Uh, and basically, you go hike 100 holes, and you try to raise money uh, from friends, family, NLU Nation. There were five teams of five. Uh, my team was uh, Brett Waldrop, a uh, friend of the program. Uh, Matt Adamski, the GM at Sweetens, uh, was team captain. And then we had uh, Drew Holcomb. Uh, of Drew Holcomb and the Neighbors, uh, country music sensation. Um, and uh, who was our last person? Oh, of course, Rob Collins, the, uh, the, the guy that designed the place. Bart, Bart, Bart. We, uh, we raised a ton of money, which was really cool, uh, $37,809. So shout out to everybody that donated. We'll get to that at the end with some of the, uh, we had some creative donations that we can, we can uh, Recap and then uh, shout out to Cash App too, who uh, who decided to match uh, you know 10k of those donations with uh, Cash App money and and they've just been supportive of Youth on Course all year with our uh, with our podcast stuff. So that's kind of a general overview. Unbelievable, Neil. Well, congratulations on not dying. First of all, I, I know we were kind of saying it's a bit of a canary in the coal mine situation. You don't you know you don't necessarily need to outrun the bear. You just need to outrun uh, you know the the least fit person on your team because once they go down, you know the whole team's probably going to stop, right? So it's yeah. <laughs> but it and, seemed like and, everybody and was pretty good. What's great about golf is you you don't have to talk to people the whole day, so you can kind of go off and 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 everyone. There was a nice flow to how like some holes you're walking down the fairway. You know, I'm walking with Drew some holes and we're talking about the music business, but like, you know, he doesn't want to talk about that. And then he's asking me about NLU and I'll, you know, I'll do that for a hole, but then I'm like, Hey, I just need to like go maybe, and maybe not for 12 hours. Yeah. Yeah. So it's great that you have the space to come and go as you please. All right. Well, I'm going to play some, uh, some clips as we kind of move through here. First of all, I want to kind of know about your, uh, your prep. How did you, how did you prepare for this? I bet there's not a lot of elevation in, in Jack's. So I've been doing the stadiums at Fletcher High School uh, in <laughs> my a great vest. great football stadium, huh? It is. It is. And then this is the morning of 326 Central. Let's go launch them. Or early wake up call, but I've been uh, I've been training training pretty hard for this uh, Rainier climb and this fit in really well. Ready to go 100 nonstop all day. I drank a ton of Pedialyte and water. Got to make that a job. Um, but I'm looking forward to it. It's, it's, uh, I like experiences like this. Talk me through your kind of provisions out there. I know, I know you're a big Oregon Trail guy, big covered wagon guy. You're, you're big. You're not going to get caught with your pants down as far as, you know, not having gear. What, what, what are we thinking here? You know, keep your feet dry is rule number one. Uh, so sock changes were crucial. I think I had 10 pairs of socks ready if you need them. Uh, I had three pairs of shoes. That's so um, many pairs of socks. I had plenty of towels, and I had a, a plenty of shirts because I, I know also changing your shirt can really change a mindset. Um, and of course, you know, I'm the czar, so I got to have my hats. I had uh, multiple options here. Good time to shout out the Quater uh, shoes, the, the ringers, um, and the money makers here in this photo. Uh, I, I find that they, the, especially the ringers, are kind of the perfect combo of like cushioned, like athletic shoes but with the with really good traction of golf shoes. Um, so I had two pairs of these uh, that I kind of leaned on most of the day. Um, and then the money makers are the ones on the right and I, I wore those, I, I kind of filtered those in. <clears throat> come on, come on, come on. Hell yeah, got some goals, keeping stats, 
fairways, greens, putts. I'm curious to see what the uh, water bottle count's gonna be. I'm curious to see how many times I pee. I know you mentioned a couple goals. I, I won't say, uh, you know, betting for for legal reasons, but maybe a couple props people could throw their money behind. What, you know, what were you looking at in that department? If I get over 10, then every birdie, people that give me $100 and, and bought that in the pro shop will get $2 for birdies and $5 for eagles. So we'll see where we ended up with that. And then I had uh, the flip side of that, which was if I, you know, do you think I'm going to make 10 or more doubles in 100 rounds of golf? And I really, really, really wanted to keep it under 10. All right. Should be. It was right off this tree. I, just, I hit it pretty good, too, downwind. And I came to that line because I usually make about a double. Like, I'd say it's like 1.5 doubles per 18 holes. Like, I just I can't help it. I have to blow one off the planet. <laughs> and so that that was that was an interesting line. And everybody, you know, if, if I do make 10 or more doubles, then everybody that, you know, donated on that one will get uh, a free towel with their next NLU purchase in the pro shop. And then there was an ace chase, of course. Of course. If I aced a hole, I said I was going to make some commemorative item of clothing and I was going to give everybody like 50 bucks to the pro shot. Oh, he did it. He put it on the on the right side. Get there. Get there. Funky ass hop. Stay up. Uh, spoiler alert, there's no ace. Uh, and then there was a co-crack all in package. So you could you could get all three, just sprinkle right? Just a little bit. Sprink if you couldn't pick, you just sprinkle. All right, well, let's get into the actual golf here a little bit. So, everybody started did you everybody start on 9? Just you guys start on 9? How did how did this kind of work? Talk me through some of this. Yeah, so everybody starts on nine, which is a par three at, at uh, Sweetens. And I was playing with Rob Collins, who designed the place. Um, and so I was asking him, like, what do you think? What's the hole in one pin? He convinced me that the, the le there's two pins on every green. So that's worth noting at, at Sweetens. Massive greens. Uh, I also tracked um, – Great first putt there, times by the way. Oh, God. <laughs> so that's going to be a storyline today. It was crazy. And I think you'll see from the footage, there are literally – Balls flying everywhere. Everyone's putting at the same time. So it, it, it becomes just a, uh, you know, you're trudging through it, uh, just hole by hole by hole. I made a mess of number one all day. This is number one, par five, and uh, made bogey here. Like, that's a great swing there. <laughs> what, uh, what time did you guys start? Uh, we started at 520. So everybody went off. We were the last group off, and then we ended up lapping two groups within the first nine holes. It was a beautiful morning. Good cloud cover. Uh, this was crucial. I took the head covers off on hole two. Oh, smart. Can't, no wasted energy. That and not teeing the golf ball up all day were crucial. So I think I teed it up. I hit driver in the first nine holes a couple times, but then I, I took the driver out of the bag and said it's not worth the energy. Um, so this is a nice uh, comfy three putt here, I believe, as well. So we're starting uh, back, yes. to back, back to back three putts. Back to back three putts into number two uh, with a lost ball. Um <laughs> So this was my first double of the day. So I started off with two three putts and a double. So that was super cool. Okay, so number three, the par five, uh, kind of your first, you know, go get it, go get it opportunity here. Go, yeah, go, get up there. Ooh, I think that took a peek. Yeah, that was might have been the shot of the day uh, early. So. You know, it was it was bleak there for a minute, and then uh, and then it got better. So, eagle putt here on number three. Boom. Cash, cash. Let's go. Round one. Sun is out. Well, not out yet, but the pool is Luke. Uh, eagle on three after a double on two. We're we're centering ourselves. We're getting our yardages dialed. We're feeling good. L let's start with kind of big themes. What what were some of your your big takeaways from the day, uh, you know, I know you were kind of saying the day kind of broke up into almost like two segments. Uh, maybe we start there. We finished 50 holes. We were halfway by 11, I want to say 11.30. Five hours in, round five, fifth hole. Just hit the green in one. We like that. Coming off double on four. Second time I've duffed it off the tee. Unfortunately, the sun's out. It's, it's thinking about coming out. Also, it's thinking about raining. We're just kind of stuck in the middle. Uh, we got to get off. We, we got to stop double bogeying, man. First shirt change. We got that uh, blade collar on. See if this will last before the sun gets out. You got to get the dark colors out of the way. I mean, so we were cruising. 
Um, and then literally right after we finished 50, the sun came out and it was just, uh, it was like soul crushing again would be the, the way I would describe it. Sun's out, fuck. Pots are starting to go in the shorties, but you know, the good swings are numbered. God, I can't get this bug off, fuck off, man. And that's when it got very difficult because you have to, when you're sweaty and dirty, you gotta start reapplying sunscreen. So then it becomes that's like- the, That's the worst feeling. It's it's really, it's like, oh, man, maybe I can get away with it for a little longer. Ah, fuck you know? it, maybe I'll just uh, get skin cancer. Yeah, so it's like trying to keep up and keep doing the right things. You know what's been holding up well? Yeah. My butt cheeks. Okay. Chafing. That is, that's nasty. Has not been a factor just yet. I found that everybody starts to fall back on these like sayings, you know, like they're, they almost get like punch drunk. We had like a Sherpa who was Colt, who's the assistant out at Sweetens, and every every group had like a, a guy in a cart with waters and, and gold bond and just things of that nature. But every time there was a birdie or those guys hit a good shot, I, what they would say, uh, that's how we do, Colt. <laughs> yeah, Colt, that's how we do, how we do, Colt. And it was just like over and over, like chatty Kathy doll. Like, and by the end of the day, I was like, shut the fuck up. But I know there was some stuff that I was probably saying. <laughs> Which I'm I was sure. Say, we'll ha having been on the other side of that, would you get one yeah, of those yeah, yeah. stuck so in your I'm, head? I, I, I yeah, see where you know. you're coming from. Yes, sir. Two in a row, Colt. Second hole, eighth loop. Just had a sock change, shorts change, shirt change. Had some gold bond spray. Kind of got on my schwanz. Feels pretty cool. Uh, dogs are barking, but we uh, we powdered them up a little bit. Shout out to Sarge. Um, yeah, I think, God, this has got to be the round. We're, we're, we're one over through two. I think I got another par round in me, baby. I think we've shot even once, but we got to go get one here. We got to go. We got to go now. Big theme of the day was doing this with a group was huge, right? Like it was a, very much a community feel. Like everybody's, you know, cheering for each other. Um, you know, everybody's like getting mad about bad shots, but then the minute a birdie putt goes in, we're all we're all getting jacked up. How that's how we do, Colt. That's how we do. You know, it just felt like uh, everybody. We were rooting for each other, um, and and there was no like, there was no quit. And it was also when uh, it felt like all of us were taking turns pushing the pace. Great out, Drew. Finish strong. Loop nine. Third hole. Finish bogey, bogey, bogey. Just shoot one over on eight. Hate that. Doubled one, percent on nine doubles. I'm gonna fight. I'm gonna fight that last double off till the end. So two over. Still gotta look at that under par round. I'm searching right now. Let's go get it. Did your approach kind of change at all throughout the day? I mean, I, I know you're a big score guy. Did you have certain like nine hole scoring goals where you, was it a true one shot at a time? How, how did, take me through that. My best score of the day was a 34, but I started with a 41, 42. Like I just didn't, didn't come out of the gates. And that was more the, the putting than it was anything else. One time, one time, one time. Ah, come on, man. All right, shot 35 in round 11. So I think that's what I'm proudest of. All right, hole 90. Shout out to my guy, Trago. We're charging. Buffalo's roaming. 11 holes. I guess 10 left. I don't know, something like that. Finally got some cloud cover. Huge. And we shot one under on the 10th round. God, that's big, man. Slay the dragon, and then promptly went bogey, bogey, which is cool. Uh, but we're gonna fight to the end here. I summoned it towards the end of the day and then shot 40 uh, and and uh, bogeyed the uh, 100th hole, which was cool. <laughs> Three putt bogey on uh, on nine to finish the day. Um, so I, I accomplished the goal. Uh, it could have been a lot better. Probably could have been a lot worse. I feel a little beat up. Uh, I feel good about the prep. I feel good about the attitude. I feel good about the performance overall from a just getting it done, workman mentality. <clears throat> Obviously there's a few we want back. I think the MVP by far of uh, the day was my driving iron, my 21 degree Apex Pro driving iron. Prime time as people I, may know it. When I started getting tired and the swing starts to get, you know, like I feel like a stranger, 
uh, I decide you know, that's the club that I know I can listen. I can shorten my swing and just kind of punch it, keep the face closed, and and just kind of get it out there. As you play this, you hit this many golf shots, you start to um, you for you'll find this like the extended rhythm for a while. And then it'll just go away completely, and then it'll come. It's just like it truly like waves. It comes and goes, but it it wasn't like uh, it was consistent for those periods of time. And it's actually the embodiment of what happens a lot to me on the golf course. Of man, I wish I had that one back. It's like don't worry, bud. You got eight more tries at it, right? Like we can we can we can flip the mo on this one. Um, so I think that definitely helped the rhythm. Checking in after another double on five. We are now five over on five. We we just we gotta play a little smarter. What comes to mind? Biggest biggest regrets? What you wish you did differently? There was a lot of scoring opportunities on number five. God, dude, fuck that, fuck that side of the course. As you can see here, uh, I re yeah. I regret the language I used all day. <laughs> it's gonna get a lot worse before it gets better. All right, settle in there. But I missed right on five, like four straight loops, and I it's just it was one of those like you're gonna do it again, aren't you? You know, and then you start like in your own head like yeah yeah you are you clown. <laughs> and it turns out I was God, go uh, shout out to an old film room we did with Maddie Kelly, Mark Leishman's caddy of breaking par from the red tees at Jack's cool. beach. I was making that mistake of there's a, the devil's bunghole, this bunker <laughs> by the green on in, in front, the lion's mouth bunker on number five at Sweetens. And it, you got, you can't hit it in there. So I was doing that thing where I'm like, okay, I have two ten to clear that. Cool. Let's take two extra clubs. <laughs> You know, like, yeah, let's just, like, take that out of play. Well, guess what? Hitting it long not great. there is awful, yeah, too. And great. so then you're trying to hit these, like, kind of cut, like, too much club, so I'm going to cut it. Well, then I'm going to miss right. And so instead of just hitting a four iron, good, and just yep. trying to hit the shot, I'm trying to, like, you know, build in some buffer and hit the wrong club. And so then I ended up missing in that right bunker and making double, making bogey, making double just for the first three or four rounds. And and I think that really threw me off. The other thing that was really frustrating was how I played the par threes, both because I, I had a lot of pressure on, you know, I really wanted to make an ace. I thought that would have been kind of the shot heard around the world. Like, <laughs> champ, champ, did you hear what Icarito did down at Sweeten's Cove? Extra, extra. And so I was putting a lot of pressure on these shots. I Rob talked me into going to the left pin on nine, I kind of think I should have mixed it up a little bit more um, and tried because I was not, I had so much trouble keeping the ball on the right side of this hole to let it, let it feed down. As you can see, I keep missing left. And then I had this shot all day. And then I had this putt coming back that I missed over and over <laughs> and over again. And then four, which is a like 100 yard green, like literally maybe the biggest green in, in the country. And I just, I duffed that shot two rounds in a row. Just duffed it, like duffed the gap wedge from the tee, just bad swings. And uh, those two doubles were soul crushing as well. So I birdied every hole out there over the 100 holes, except for number nine, which was the par three. Um, which is unbelievable. And, and that's that's almost like, you know, not a, not, of course, the, the people at Sweetens know what they're doing, but that's, that's shocking to me because it seems like some of those pins are any part of the slope you hit, it's going to roll up next to them. So I almost wonder if the pin got stuck in between kind of that back section where it rolls out to and the front section where it rolls out to, right? Like you're probably, well, were you almost always long or short, basically? It was more just, I didn't hit good golf ah. shots. Again, I was hitting these like trappy, punchy irons all day. If I had aimed at the right pin and I kept drawing it left of the left pin and it's like, God, try to put it on that hill in the middle of the two. And I just, uh, I think my, my strategy was all wrong there. We did it. No, that's a par. Yeah, other than the par threes, I hit some really good approach shots into number two. Uh, I birdied at, at least twice. Go in. Go in. Go in. Let's go! I birdied three, eagled three, um, and then number seven. What makes number seven so interesting? I mean, that's that's the one when we were kind of drawing this up. It's like, oh, man, I want to see how you play that hole every single time. Granted, it changes a little bit if the tee's not moving around, but what do you what do you like about that hole? I mean, it's like one of the hardest greens in America, I would say. But like there's – so there's not that much pinnable space, but it just runs off. It's a very long, skinny green with uh, runoffs on both sides. And there's these little pockets, um, almost like, you know, like thumb prints 
where they can pin it. And so if you hit a good tee shot, um, especially from this forward tee, you have the chance to, you know, uh, like really hit a golf shot that puts you like on one of these plateaus. And a lot of times it's exciting because you can also run one up and it almost gets up and then it comes back to this spot, right? Or it rolls just over down to the right. And then you've got to kind of figure out how to get it to up and over these, I mean, eight to nine foot uh, mounds that kind of guard the sides of the green into these thumbprints. And, it, and it's also like, it's a very simple looking hole. Like it's the kind of hole you'd look at and be like, oh, there's nothing to this one. And then the, the more you play it, the more you respect it, I think. I'm seeing quite a few putts uh, around the green. I think that's kind of typically the ordinary play when you miss the green on seven just because it is so severe. But then at the same time, I see you pulling a lot of wedges and, and kind of hitting these little, little nippers and scooters uh, around the green as well. Yeah, I had a great feel with the wedges, um, and I just got these new Jaws Raw wedges, which I really like. They got a lot of check to them. Felt like I had a, a good sense of how the ball was going to check coming off the hills. Very classy. I think also in this format of playing so many holes over and over again, you got to keep yourself like your mind in it. You got to. You almost have to have these little rewards. It's like, cool, you know what? I'm going to chip this one. And then when you execute the chip, it's like a serotonin hit. You're like, hell yeah. Like we did it. Whereas like when you when you putt it, which is probably what you should do, when you putt it up there, it's like, yeah, that's what you're supposed to do. Right. Like, okay, the ball didn't roll back to my feet. Let's let's take a look. One thing I know we wanted to look at was just kind of how the swing changed throughout the day. We're gonna bring in, of course, an expert swing analyst here shortly, but anything to say for yourself? Any 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 big patterns? Did you eat did the right miss get bigger did the left miss be you know did you put the left miss in play How, what you know what were kind of some swing patterns throughout the day uh left miss was definitely in play but with the irons a much more controlled version of it right so I, I think it was very smart of me to keep the driver in the bag most of the day for this format um I, i'll tell you this my swing felt shorter and shorter and shorter watching this video though this montage I, i'm not quite seeing it um i am seeing like the bottom right screen <laughs> the last swing of the day you know top left is neil schuster bottom right is paul bunyan he's just out there he's got his axe over his shoulder he's just you know oh here we go this is great first swing versus last swing uh the uh God, this is fascinating though. Uh, like, you, yeah, I see the shoulder. It's oh, it just, just get, it, it, get it, around. it almost gets to the top, and then it's kind of like, all right, mission accomplished, man. We got it up it's there. Like, Let's oh, just, drop, oh just drop it down. Gloves feels like it's a thousand pounds. But on like these swings late in the day, like it doesn't look much shorter. No. But it felt so much punchier as the day went on, right? And maybe that's because I, I was just getting quicker, right? Like the, the club just wasn't, you know, I wasn't pausing at the top, all that stuff. Um, if you go back, go back to the other frame. That was, God, that's, that's great. That's fascinating to watch. Um, I think the best swing of the day is that, uh, top row third, you know, second from the right. The one where you, you um, kind of bat flip and step back to watch and admire it a little bit. Yes. Well, I, it's funny to watch me step back. That's kind of my thing. I don't even realize this, but the, the, like the step back thing is like, I'm doing that on almost all of these, which is like. That's look look true. at the middle one. <laughs> you know, I don't. I didn't even know I was doing that. That's that's uh, that's wild, man. All right. Well, I, um, I know uh, everybody loves when we we bring in our guy Huber for the film rooms. It doesn't feel like the film oh, room God. without him. So he's been taking a look at some of these swings. Let's uh, let's see what he has to say about about how your golf swing changed throughout the day. What's going on, everyone? It's your boy Jay Hube here. Uh, just got done diagnosing a little bit of Neil for the hundred day hike. Uh, had some really good stuff going on. Playing 100 holes in a day sounds pretty terrible for uh, for me personally, but uh, kudos to Neil for sticking it out and doing it. Um, really impressed with what he's got going on. He's got a really good move, and he maintains it nicely throughout the day. There's just a few things that uh, maybe he could work on or maybe help you guys as you get tired throughout the round. Um, kind of notice when you compare the swing from the first round to the last round how uh, just a few things change. It gets a little quicker from the top towards the end of the round, which is to be expected, causing his left wing to kind of, or left arm to kind of chicken wing on the way through a little bit more than normal. As you get tired, your weight doesn't shift that well, and uh, you can get kind of stuck on your left side going back, causing that to happen. Uh, one thing you could do, I call it the cheat code. Whenever you uh, address the ball and you're getting ready to take it back, you just keep your left heel off the ground slightly, the whole backswing. 
That way you won't keep your weight in it. And then at the start of your downswing, you put it back down and that kind of signifies your weight transfer to, to start going forward. It can uh, really help if you're tired or if you don't feel like you, you got a lot of power with your lower body. Neil's kind of generating that speed at the end of the day with his hands pulling down from the top. So um, maybe that'll help you guys out. Hopefully it'll help Neil. And uh, pretty cool to see him raise some money for charity and uh, complete the 100 holes. Cheers. All right, big time. Needed it. I feel like I hustled hard. Like, you know, I got some putbacks, some offensive re rebounds. I got some, you know, I got some ugly buckets, but then with the short putts, I was booting layups. You know, I was like, God, man, you're making the tough buckets. You're working. Coach likes that. Just could not get the ball in the hole from 10 feet and in. You know, I, I wouldn't say you had your best attitude out there, self-talk wise. Uh, and I know the putting was a, a bit of a train wreck, but, you know, you didn't make it any easier on yourself. But do you have anything to say for yourself here? God damn it. <laughs> Fuck me, man. I'm so in my own head with these. I had that putt four times. God, dude, that thing dives every dude, time. <laughs> Fuck me, dude. I can't make these putts. <laughs> I don't know what I can Ooh, do different. High there. At this place. <laughs> oh. Let him in. That's my favorite line of the whole day. It's better putt, though. I just, you know, I don't know what I could do differently. Oh, did you hear the, did you hear the end? I go, well, that's a better putt, though. So honestly, I don't know like what I could do stages. differently to make this three footer. It was the five stages of grief. It was totally like, it was like, I don't, I can't remember the five stages, but I was like angry, furious. Then I tried to bargain. Of course. You know, or like, God, what, you Please. know, just give me one. <laughs> and then I was just like, just, just morose of like, this sucks. And then it was kind of like acceptance. Like, well, at least it was a better putt, you know, whatever. All right. Well, let's bring it home. Kind of last, last round here. H how are you feeling at this point when, when you get to round what? 11? I, can't, I was cramped right there. <laughs> uh, are we just at pure, like get it, get the bobsled over the finish line mode here? You look kind of like uh, Daniel Plainview here, by the way, from uh, There Will Be Blood. Uh, well, Adamski's kid, you know, the family came out to watch. So I had, I had a, uh, the homeboy Jackson out there, and he was uh, he was keeping my spirits up. And then a little bit like he was hanging out with me, like when things were going mm. bad too. And it turned into like the Home Alone kid, <laughs> wh where the vans pull up to the airport, and it's like, is it cold in France? Do these do these vans get automatic transmission? Did you know the are going to France. I don't know, kid. I'm trying. I'd scram, would you? You know, I was like, God, dude, I don't have the. I'm sorry. I, I just can't. I don't know what the answer is. That was one of the shots of the day. I, I carved one through it's this a mega gap. angle on uh, six I, there. I blew it way right on six. Uh, another thing I was very proud of was I didn't hit it in the water on six. That's six is like the only water hole. Yeah. Yeah, I hit some great tee shots with the driving iron off six, which is like a yo. You got. There's no way around it. You got to like step up and hit a good golf shot on six. I was feeling really good. The The doldrums were really that uh, 75 to 90 was really tough. Um, when the sun was out, you can see how, like, it's super hot right now. This is a sweet three-putt right here. Uh, let's just let's just that admire this. In front of the whole, you know, all I'll the finish. youth on course people. That's, I even said, I was like, yeah, I'll finish. That was now, really Now cool. I'm done. Yeah, so there's Brett. That's my guy. Uh, he was a late entry. He, he kind of filled in for a guy that had to cancel. So shout out to Brett. He just, like, showed up and, like, balled out. Um, Adamski, Rob, uh, Drew was out there. So it was a ton of fun. Like, it, it was, you know, end of the day, we're trying to raise money. And, you know, it was a ton of, ton of fun. I was uh, – I don't know if I'll be doing it again. It might be one of those, like, hey, I'm good well, I got time. nothing to prove. I might regret saying this, but it might need to be an NLU – Rite of passage. Who's Could next be. man up? We got to raise. Got to raise that money. Like, we can flash up. Um, maybe we can flash up my whoop score. Yes. Uh, one of the one of two times I've ever gotten above a twenty strength. That's unbelievable. Uh, I think I burned like five thousand two hundred calories, like something crazy. Yeah. 
um, just just rucking it, man, all day. 12 hours, 17 minutes, I think, was our final time. I thought it was going to be so much longer um, than that. You guys texted me when yeah. you're done. I, I thought you would have had four more hours left. You want to go over the stats? I, I would love to. Let's get to some goals first. I know we kind of teased out the, uh, you know, the no doubles goal. Talk to me about, you know, we're getting kind of late in the round. How, where are we at? How are you feeling about that one? Ah! Come on, be nice. I think I had five doubles in the first three rounds, so pace sure, was bad, sure. really, really trending bad. in a bad way. And then by the seventieth hole, or I think seventieth hole, I had nine. Okay. And I just They're like just let's white, fuck battle. White knuckling. I went twenty-three straight holes without a double, and like I was, you know, and that's when I like the eleventh round. I shot thirty-five. Like I had a good feel going, and then three. I came to three. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess this is nine or 94, you know, and I just, the uh, Mondo miss. Let's watch this. Let's watch I this mean, one again. Truly <laughs> lurking. Like I was trying to hit this big draw and I just didn't do it. You know, I mean, play it again. Like I, I, I can't tell you how much I'm trying to like rope this one in. Oh my god! Just off the planet. Right. And then I was like yelling to it to land on the tee box. And it just, I mean, like deep to right, didn't touch a thing, and Ben and I looked at it for a second, and then I dropped one here. So this would have even been a scummy up and down, like. But it's like I'm not gonna go back. Like I'm just gonna take all seven, you know. You can tell it's not good. I was so pissed though because I came in on ten doubles and I didn't double anymore after that. Just well, like, the birdies as a whole. What what was the goal and where where did we kind of net out there? I mean, over 10 birdies was the easiest money of the day if you've ever played at Sweetens. So I had 18 birdies. That's um, a lot. And I had two each. Well done. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's, you know, about, what, two, you know, two around? Yeah, thereabouts. Um, I putted everything out for Eagle, Birdie. I mean, I putted mostly everything out um, all day. But at some points, like, everybody else is scooping them. You don't want to be that right. guy that's slowing the group down. Um but I probably missed, oh, let's go. I, I want to say, eight to ten putts inside five feet that mattered, both for double <laughs> or for – to prevent double or for birdie. So that sucks. Yes, um, sir. But, hey, I think 18, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not ashamed with that number, birdie. right? And, and two eagles was fine. Uh, you want to run through some other stats That's that you kept? All right. Yeah, definitely. So um, we were 23 over par total which i was a little disappointed with um when i added it up the next day that's very solid man you're you're not taking the pin yeah. out you're not really going through your process i think what's really making it sting a little bit more is uh the homie joe hook shot 44 sure. under well so listen that, that's that that that's good i think he plays knowing that, that i think he plays for money though but i will say this so fairways 55 of 77 really good uh which is pretty pretty yeah. good um Greens, 69, nice. nice, of 100. Now, greens at Sweetens are massive, so that's that can be a little deceiving. Puts you at number good. 21 on the PJ Tour if you could do that for the rest of your life on every course. I was hitting a ton of long irons, which I hit into the par fives, and I was hitting a ton of wedges into the par fours, and I hit those clubs, those full swing shots, awesome all day. And then some other uh, notable stats here. Uh, 38 bottles of water. <laughs> uh Gatorade or Pedialyte, That's a lot. Uh, and Colt, my guy Colt, was mixing up some some good Pedialyte concoctions, which were crucial. I only had four lost balls, which I thought was pretty that's cool. pretty good. Uh, six sock changes. Okay, uh, we changed shoes four times. Um, three pairs of shoes, but I kind of cycled them four times. Uh, I peed five times, that's, which I was pretty I happy taken, with. I guess that's man, system's just moving, man. It's a self-contained system. Uh, well, no, I think it's a credit to like. Drinking 38 bottles of water. No, that's what I'm saying. Know? I would have I would have pounded um, the over on that one, but but the system is uh, is flushing it out in other ways. I had nine Cliff bars, Cliff bars and peanut butter cracker okay. packs, um, and I had one like half of an Italian sandwich at lunch. That's what I ate pretty much all day. Man, you know what else I had? I had a couple cold beers when we <laughs> finished up. Uh, How did you feel like a as a whole the the next couple of days? Really, the next day? I was really really stiff. Uh, like. It like right afterwards, um, I took a like forty-five minute shower, um, which was which was great. And then we like you know, they literally had a little, forty-five like, minute shower. Together. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think we've reached the finale. Any any parting thoughts? Any any parting thank yous? Anything else you want to get off your chest? I mean, I would say you know thank you to the to Callaway um, for the gear. You know that was that was couldn't have done it without the gear. I'd say thank you to Cash App for helping 
make the donations count double. That's awesome. And then yeah, Youth On Course. So if you're interested in getting involved, I think Youth On, just search Youth On Course 100 Hole Hike. They have some hikes left this year. Um, and then obviously they're going to you know, do it next year. Maybe I can convince one of you guys to get sure. out there. Well, here, here, Neil, congratulations again on finishing. Thanks to everybody who tuned in. Thanks to everybody who supported the, the hundred hole hike. Listen, spoiler alert. We're going to be doing a lot more of these film rooms. We love doing them and, uh, we're really pumped to go to a lot of fun, interesting places. So Neil, until next time, man, thank you for, uh, thank you for hopping on. 